Oh, trouble. Austin Cindric around, but kept it off the wall. Thank goodness. Now, Cindric is one of those that has to qualify into this race on time. He has to be one of the top 27 in speed. And that was just his warm-up lap there. And again, this session is when he's going to have to make it happen. He has to make the top 27. Shot the adjustments on the, the two truck. Remember, this first session is 20 minutes in length and we'll cut our field from 35 to the top 24 speeds that will advance to round two. But because Cinder is shaking and he's performing. So Cinder... Oh, no! Oh, he goes again. What a great job of driving. And jumped into 23rd fastest. But he's only got a tenth in the bank right now. Over that 27th spot. Yeah, that's that's the concern, Phil. But wow, what a job this young man just did. And, and you know, I tell all, tell young drivers all. And now just watching that monitor. Off Competition caution will, will show you the replay of that. Well, yeah, and this, let's also shout out to, to Matt Tiff, too, because Matt was supposed to be in that 11 truck. Obviously, had some brain surgery. Doing extremely well, though. Hello, Matt. Let's check in with Herbie on the 13. Will we documented the 13. Last driver right now inside the chase line. He thought for a moment it was a track bar issue. Now they've diagnosed it as an upper control arm that is broken. They're replacing that right now, but have lost two more. <laughs> Paul Custer around did not make contact with the wall and believe there's any damage to that truck. Like maybe he just lost it and, and the caution is out. In fact, we've got a couple of them that have been hey, besides Martins who have come to a stop. Yeah, they just stopped. Uh, because they couldn't see. Martin's bowled the tires, blocked the track with smoke. They came to a stop, now they can't get going. Under caution for the fourth time tonight. Traffic up ahead of the leader. There you see Ben Rhodes with a bit of an issue. Maybe uh, the top six I think have not pitted. Yeah, I was going to I think we, everybody felt like they could go farther. Rhodes has not pitted. And he looks to be out of fuel. He got a shove off turn two by Ben Kennedy, and it sent him toward the bottom. I just wonder if he got some debris. It's been a challenging day for Abreu. Let's get an update for Hermie. Tough break for the 98 Vince. We saw Rico go a lap down, get back on the lead lap, and really make his way through the field. But about 15 laps ago, the truck just shut off. It quit getting fuel. Some type of, of, of a fueling issue for the 98. And trouble on the left front. Caution's out. And that's Cameron Haley. We were just talking about the smoke coming out of the back end of Haley's truck. Yeah, I think that was a left front tire. Remember, we saw some pretty excessive tire wear on these trucks in practice. Again, that's a, over 130 laps on those tires for Cameron Haley. And plus, Phil, he was falling off dramatically, so there had to be something going on. Probably wore through that left front tire. And that's a big break for the guys that hadn't pitted yet. Their tires are wearing our top four that stayed on the racetrack right now. As they come off turn two, pit road will be open. Inside, Daniel Suarez on the outside. Back good, green. Good Back start by Suarez on that outside. He was able to put his nose out in front of Bell. Bell's going to spin. Christopher Bell. The leader goes around and the caution is back out. He kept it out of that inside wall, I think. He will be able to get that truck turned around, stay on the lead lap. But I think he's going to have to have that, that. Those tires will be damaged. Yeah, I think he'll have to have another set of tires for sure. 
and I, I talked about coming to pit road, you can't win. Well, he's going to test that. He has an opening on the inside that just ran out of room there. And I think NASCAR saw this crash happening and threw the caution. I would have too. Pat Napier did a nice job of using the wall. Truck up against oh, the wall. Jordan Anderson had worked his way, stayed on the lead lap. Let's see if he can get that truck turned around before Suarez gets there. And he does. He will stay on the lead lap. What a great run Jordan Anderson's having tonight, guys. Yeah, he's inside the top 15 on the lead lap. And then goes for a spin on the back straightaway, but no damage to that 66 truck. So you see a little bit of the. Four tires. I like that. Let's yeah. get four tires. See what we can get here with 28 yeah. laps to go. Yeah, let's get caught up first. Oh, a key move, getting that truck backed up and going before Suarez got around to put him a lap down. Got a bunch of trucks right now. Spot in the chase standings, but Haley's had some problems, and Kennedy has moved up. Now he's in that eighth and final spot for the chase. Yeah, look at Haley now back 17 points out of that bubble spot. We're going we're gonna to talk about the bouncing around of those bubbles. Has gone around. Big contact by Daniel Suarez. Boy, how quickly it changes. Herbie? It was a right rear tire that was flat. He caught it on the radio when he bobbled up the racetrack. He started to feel it. He tried to get back to the bottom of the racetrack and ride it out, but it finally lost enough air to cause him to spin on the racetrack. But a right rear tire was the issue for the 51. Look at that heavy damage to the 51 truck. You kind of seem to forget sometimes these guys are running 130 miles an hour down into the corner until something goes wrong, and that truck is horseshoe. Guys, we talked about a lot of stuff can happen in the last 25 laps. We saw William Byron take the lead over. We saw him lose the lead to Ben Kennedy. And now we see Suarez into the outside wall with a flat tire. See, he walks gingerly on that banking. So Suarez, who led 79 laps tonight, is done. His first Camping World Truck Series victory. Corner just along for the ride then. Look at all the damage to that Aris Toyota. Going to be less than 10 to go when we end up going back to green. Jesse Little, we talked about the battle for that free pass. Moffat chasing. Both trying to secure their first win. Boy, Moffat's all over him. He can nudge him if he wants to. Deep into the corner. Gives him a little bump. Moffat's going to nudge him, I believe. Bill. He's got two chances to do it. The white flag left. Ben Kennedy oh, trying to hold off Moffat. Great quarter by Ben Kennedy. Strong exit. I don't think Moffat can get there. Ben Kennedy through three and four. He's going to do it. Ben Kennedy wins at Bristol. his first career win and securing a spot in the chase and an opportunity to win a championship.
There's some damage to the right side though now. The deck lid, oh, big damage to the quarter panel. This place is just, you see the hinge broken loose. You gotta be careful the deck that doesn't blow off as the leaders come to pit road. Rick. Just 66 laps to go. Kyle Larson, Eric Jones all coming on to pit road. Parker. Had the caution not come out early, they may have had to pit under green, and you lose a lot of laps pitting under green, but they were down. The only way they were going to get back was to gamble a little bit. They got the caution they needed, now they're back in the lead. The car's very good. It just could be a spit tighter. They'll make an air pressure adjustment in four tires, Dave. Kyle Busch debated with his team on whether four... Teammates. Oh, the 20 just... Jones. Basically, I'm sure it wasn't on purpose, but just misjudged corner entry, got into the left rear quarter panel of the 19 behind the tire, turns the 19 around, and, and they all start spinning and crashing from there. I'm saying to quit, but you can't quit. You see damage coming off turn two. He just comes up the racetrack, doesn't feel that the 88's there, or feels the 88's going to give him a spot. They, they, you know, that's Bristol. That's what happened. You know, especially with the two different lines, the bottom and the top, when you come off the corner exit, they converge on the straightaway. You have to make sure you're clear. Mike Bizarro. Middle around and move around a lot. Right now he's got a little momentum. Again, to the bottom of the racetrack. Under five laps to go. Kyle Busch hooks the left side. He oh. takes the lead there into the wall. Kyle yeah, Busch into the wall. Right there, no pride. All the way up to the wall and the caution comes out. He collects the three of Ty Dillon. Kyle Busch thinking he had the 22 cleared. Up into the wall, Brad Keselowski out front. But how much damage to the 22 with the contact made by the 18? And a good chance we'll go overtime. Run to the garage, you guys. Three and tie, Dylan. He, you know, we talk about how fast they come up on this. Well, he committed to the top of three and four, and the 18 was there. He ran into the 18 really, really hard. Yeah, Ty Dillon, one of those drivers we talked about it before, battling for the lead, had the lead. Now he's in the garage. We knew they had to push the issue in the eight. He is a competitor. He had the lead. Now he's. It's been a pretty good start for the 42 to even be with him into the corner. Austin Dillon racing to get to the overtime line. He passes it. Here comes Elliott Sadler, three wide per second. Sadler takes it away. Up the racetrack he goes. Here comes the seven. Justin Algar has moved up to second. Kyle Larson on the high side. Checkered flag in the air. Austin Dillon will win at Bristol. Dillon for the first time in his career wins at Bristol in the Xfinity Series. Heard the excitement in Richard Childress' his voice. His grand, that's his grandson just won the race. It's got to be a great week. Great week for him, too. Just got engaged. And now wins at Bristol. Wait. Just a couple weeks ago from a racing accident, see the BC sticker also on the Ford car, Devin Harvey. A lot of drivers paying their respects. Right, so oh, and around goes the 16 again. This time it was coming out of turn two. Keeps it off the wall again. Earlier in practice, Greg Biffle off turn four went around. So now he'll bring it back into the infield. Now they have fortunate part for the sixth goal. I say it could have been a lot worse. Back to the attention of his crew on pit road. The clock stopped. Uh, looks like there is a little bit of damage there to the 16. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I really I think so. so the rule as I understand it, we're going to get confirmation from NASCAR, is if you have not made a timed lap and you have an issue with a tire, you can change it. But after you... Left rear quarter panel is damaged. I wonder if something broke in the rear suspension. It was said, you know, he talked about the car driving bad and strange. I wonder if something in the trailer arm or something in the track bar mount, something broke in the back of the car, I assume. And then the 46 comes into the picture, committed to the bottom, it appears, and he makes contact with the, you know, you, you can get an erect you had nothing to do with.
you see Kyle Busch's obvious disappointment. Good car. This looks interesting. there. You no. get a replay of it, but it looked like to me, Kurt just got really loose off of turn two. So loose that I always thought he had a problem, but get a replay and get a better view of it. Uh, I think the drive shaft is blown out of Sounded like Kurt Busch there talking as we're watching Brad Keselowski work his way back to pit road. Taking a little look at what happened. You see right there, a big wiggle from the 41, just very loose, and now these guys behind them, there's nothing they can do. No. All the, obviously, the right side tires are up. I just think he got loose. Uh, yeah, and then Brad Kozlowski had nowhere to go. The rest of the cars just, you, you know, you, you know he's coming back up towards the racetrack. So as they try to get slowed down, they just continue to make contact with one another. Chase Elliott, not sure if he has front end damage or not. But he was very close. We see the 41 sliding there, and the two just. Slamming into the driver's side door. That view right there showed how close it was for Joey Logano. Barely squeaking by with the right side of his race car. 48 and Jimmy Johnson just getting by. Jeff Gordon cleared it down low. Still there. They go to the right. Caution down, caution down, back down, back down. Right. Go to the apron here if you can. All the way to the apron. It's happen, but then has enough. Just talent, really. Talent and sense to get back in the gas. Look at Jimmy Johnson for a big slide here. But, you know, enough talent to get back into the gas to drive through the wreck before they have a chance to get up and get him. With the 24, Jeff, you were mentioning, it looks like some heavy damage to the hood and the nose. It'll be interesting to see if there's any damage to the cooling system. That's right up there in that area. See, Paul Menard had the right front tire locked up to try to miss the wreck, so he may have flat spotted it. Bristol. 